Okay. It says prove that the sum from 1 to n of k is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. You first need to understand what that means. In first semester, we did talk a little bit about our summation notation. Do you remember what Greek letter that is? Starts with an S. Sigma. This is sigma, right? Sigma means sum. So we start by plugging 1 into k, and so it means 1, and then you put a plus. And you plug in the number that comes after 1, which would be 2. If you plug in 2 for k, you get 2. Plug in the number after 2, you get 3. So on and so forth, just like we wrote out, all the way until you get to n. And they're saying if you want to know what the numbers 1 through n add up to, we did 1 to 100. If you want to know what the numbers 1 through n add up to, the, the claim is that it adds up to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, That's the claim. So we tried it with 100, right? And if you notice, what it says is that if you want to add up the numbers 1 through 100, what you do is you take 100 and you multiply it by 100 plus 1 and you divide that by 2. Notice the 100 divided by 2 gives you 50. 50 times 100 plus 1, which is 101, right? Does everybody see from our example that Frederick Gauss did where we get the 100 plus the 1 and where we get the 50? The 50 is the number of sets that we add together, correct? And the 100 plus 1 is the actual sum. So it, this adds up to 5,050. Now imagine that teacher that was checking Frederick Gauss's work. She had to, or he or she actually had to go through and add them all up, didn't they? Yeah, but he was right. We know he's right because we can prove it. There's three principles of mathematical induction, and the first one is show the rule holds true. For the first few cases. I mean, let's all admit, we're, we're not as smart as Frederick Gauss, okay? We're not even close, okay? Maybe Wendy, I guess. Wendy, feeling it? Yeah, okay, she is, she is. She's not humble at all. She's just going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm the smartest, okay. All right, so there we go. Um, we're, let's forget about adding up 1 through 100. Let's just, let's just start with the first case. Okay, let's add up one number. Let's start with case n is equal to 1. Thank you. If we start with the case n is equal to 1, what that means is we just want to do the first term. So, let's just look at that. <laughs> if we just start with one term, what does that one term add up to? Itself, right? Everybody agreed? So let's show that that's true. Does 1 equal 1 times 1 plus 1 divided by 2? Is that statement true? It is. That equals 1. Good. We've got it. I'm not convinced that the rule holds true. I mean, it worked for one, but let's try the second case. Case n is equal to 2. That means that we add the numbers 1 plus 2. And so I plug in 2 for n. So this side is 1 plus 2. This side is 2 times 2 plus 1 divided by 2. Is that statement true? They both come out to be? 3. Lindsay. So if we say, if we say case n is equal to 100, we would say, what do the numbers 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot, 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 plus all the way up to 100, what do those add up to? So I'm choosing to add, in this case, I'm adding up 100 terms. In this case, I'm adding up the first two terms. Got it? Yeah. Let's do case 3.
So we're going to show true for a case n, n is equal to 3 here. So I'll do 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay? All right, so I got 1 plus 2 plus 3. And then what do I, so, so that's this left side. So what's the right side then? 3 times 3 plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, what, what is the left side sum to? It sums to 6. How about, how about this side? It also does 6, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Are you convinced it works? Do you feel like you need to try another? Marissa's skeptical. Let's try one more. Case n is equal to 4. Okay. Let's try n is equal to 4. So I go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Uh, what does that add up to? 10. It adds up to 10. So that will be 4 times 4 plus 1 divided by 2. And I'm really good at this side because 4 plus 1 is 5 times 4 is 20 divided by 2 is 10. Hey, it still works, doesn't it? I don't feel like I need to try the fifth one. Are you okay with that? Are you willing to give on that one? Okay, let's not try the fifth case. It sure seems like it works for the first few. Like if it didn't work for one of them, then we could reject the rule, right? Like if it fails once at all, we can reject it. Have we gotten it to fail at all yet? No. But to show it works for all numbers, how long would it take us to actually plug in all the numbers? Eternity, right? Fortunately, we have a different option, mathematical induction. The second, the second uh, principle of mathematical induction is the induction hypothesis, or IH. And what the induction hypothesis is, is this. Assume the rule holds true for case n is equal to k. So we did case 1, we did case 2, we did case 3, we did case 4. We're just going to assume it works for case n is equal to k. All right? So we're going to write that down. That's part 1. We showed it worked for a few, first few cases. Part number 2 is... Assume it holds true for case n is equal to k. So what that means is I want to write this out, but instead of stopping at 2 or 3 or 4, I stop at k. All right? So basically all that means is instead of putting an n in that spot, I just put a k in that spot. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot, dot, dot plus k is equal to k times k plus 1 divided by 2. That's all there is for step 2. Step three is show the rule holds true for case n is equal to k plus one. K plus one is the next term. Does that make sense? K plus 1 is the one that happens after K, right? Right? What's the number after 17, Kenzie? 18. Taylor, what's the number after 24? We just add 1, right? So the next one is the K plus 1 term. And this is the part where you want to try to understand. Because you're going to be able to follow just like the written rule, and you'll be able to figure it out for the, the, the homework and stuff. But what you want to do right now is you want to understand the logic. And here it is. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> 
Okay. What numbers have we shown it works for? Uh, what was that? One through four, right? We showed it works for one, two, three, and four. Everybody agree? What's the next term after four? Five. So five would be the next term. So if we show it works for the next term, and it works for five, then five can go over here for the ones that it works for, right? Okay, so now it works for five. What's the next term after five? Hey, if we showed it works for the next term, it now works for six. So six goes for the ones it works for. All right, what's the next one after six? Seven. Okay, so I can put seven back in the ones it works for. Do you get the point? Once you show it works for the next term, once you show it works for the next term, you can just straight go to infinity, can't you? The dominoes just tip, don't they? They just go all the way through. So let's do it. We'll come back to that because probably about a third of people understood that. We'll get back to it. Okay. And here it is. Show the rule holds true for case n is equal to k plus 1. And this is where people start to get lost, okay? So follow very closely, okay? So I don't want to stop with K. I want to stop with K plus 1. Everybody got that? So I'm going to write it down. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot, 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 dot plus K plus 1. Now, I am going to show the term before it. There's no harm in including an extra term, right? I'm going to include that k there. It's super important to make sure you include k as well. Is equal to, does anybody know what goes in for n now? How many terms have we added up? k plus 1. So k plus 1 goes in for n. Everybody okay? So here I go. I go k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. So wherever I had an n, I put a k plus 1 in that position. We good? I have to show that the left is equal to the right. I must show that the left is equal to the right. And when you're working with proofs like this, that you have things on each side, you can only touch one side. So I am not going to mess with this side at all. This is hands off right here, okay? But I am going to work with this side. And the whole ability to be able to work through this proof rests with this piece right here, that you understand what that is. Somewhere up on the board, I have written 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot, dot, dot plus k, and we know that that's equal to something. Does anybody see it? It's right here, right? You will always use your inductive hypothesis. Step two is your inductive hypothesis. You will always make use of this. You will always, 100% of the time, make use of that. That's why we wrote it down. We didn't just write it down to try to make logical sense. We wrote it down because we were going to use it. I could take this thing right here and put in its place k times k plus 1 divided by 2. So that's that. What do I still have remaining on the left-hand side? Plus k plus 1. Everybody good with that? And I have to make that look like that. Now, if you, if you look at how you started, this thing right here, it didn't look at all like that, did it? didn't look at all like that. Does it look closer to it now? It does. There's a number of ways to work through here, and everybody's at different spots. I'm going to try to pick the spot that I think works for everybody, and that is I'm going to try to make common denominators. So if I want to make common denominators, multiply top and bottom by 2. Let's go. And so now I have k times k plus 1 over 2 plus 2k plus 2 over 2. 
I'm going to combine some like terms together. I got k times k is k squared. I got k times 1 is k plus 2k is 3k. And then I've got uh, this 2 over there, over 2. Everybody good with that? We're almost done. You have to make this look like that. You have to make this look like that. And here's the nice thing about proofs. You always know the answer. This is the answer. Well, this is factored form, isn't it? Can you factor this? You sure can. Let's factor it. K plus 1 times what? What is this factor to? Yep, k plus 1 times k plus 2. All over 2. That looks very close to what I have right here, doesn't it? I just need one more thing. k plus 1 plus 1, is that the same thing as k plus 2? Yeah, so I'm just going to separate that 2 into a 1 plus 1. So k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1, all divided by 2. And that is equal to what we had on the other side, which was k plus 1 times uh, k plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2. When you're done with it and you get the left side to be exactly the right side, you could write QED, done. You could put a box. I don't care. However you want to end your proof, you're done. But that's the idea. You've just done a proof. It didn't feel like a proof because you're used to geometry type proofs, which are still really cool, but they just get a bad rap. I don't know why. Maybe it's something about sophomore or freshman year. I don't know. But since in logical terms, why does the process of mathematical induction work? And I'm just going to write it like this. It tips the dominoes. And what I mean by that is once you've shown it works for 1 and 2 and 3, when you know it works for the next term, it just keeps jumping to the next term, next term, next term. And before you know it, you've shown it works for all integers from 1 to infinity. It's one just the most beautiful, beautiful pieces of logic that we work with in mathematics. That's one example. We will pick up on Tuesday. And as we do two more examples on Tuesday, you're going to be ready, or on Monday, excuse me, you're going to be ready to practice one on your own. There's different levels. There's ones that are easier, harder, and hardest. And you'll make mistakes as you go. But trust me, by the time we get to uh, Tuesday, middle of class, you'll be pretty good at it. Okay? Did you know how to do some of these then? No. Okay. You are not right. This is a three-day deal. Today, you are just being kind of, we're just throwing it at you, okay, and seeing kind of what sticks on the wall. On Monday, after I do two examples with you, you're going to be like, you know what? I think I could try one on my own. And you are going to try one on your own, and, and you'll become a little bit better with it. On Tuesday, you will definitely be able to do some on your own. How's that? There you go. Here.